Hello, mathematicians. Here's the video for Home Connections 51 and 52. Here we go. I had to read this first problem a couple of times. It says, for lunch on Tuesday, and here's Tuesday's picture down here, David and his three friends shared a sub sandwich. So that's four kids all together. The four friends each ate the same amount of sandwich. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw that right now. So if I were to split this sub sandwich into four sections, it would look something like that. And it says that I should label it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and label each section as a fourth. So if four kids share a sandwich, they each get a fourth of the sandwich. The second part of the question is a little bit different. It says on Thursday, David shared two sub sandwiches with seven friends from his soccer team. So that's eight kids total. So now we're sharing two sub sandwiches. So we have double the amount of sandwich, but we also have double the amount of people. So it's really the same amount of sandwich. So if I split these two sandwiches up evenly, each kid is still going to get a fourth of a sandwich, not an eighth, because we're not splitting each sandwich into eighths. We're splitting each sandwich into four pieces. Okay, and the reason that it's the same amount of sandwich is because, yes, there's double the amount of kids, but we also have double the amount of sandwich. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at that next question. All right, the next question said, what fraction of a sandwich did David eat on Tuesday? So in that first picture, David ate one-fourth. Next question, what fraction did he eat on Thursday? He ate the exact same amount on Thursday. And again, the reason it's the same is because, yes, there's twice as many kids on Thursday, but there's also twice as many sandwiches. So that's how it ended up being a fourth of a sandwich each time. All right, and we already answered number four. Did David eat more sandwich on Tuesday or on Thursday? And I'm going to say he ate the same amount, right? It was one fourth each time. And then it says to explain your thinking. And I think a good explanation might be um, there were uh, twice as many kids. Oh, no, that was huge. Sorry. He, there we go. He ate the same amount. Okay. And a good explanation would be, Yes, there were twice as many kids on Thursday, but there were also twice as many sandwiches. There were twice as many kids, but also twice as much sandwich. So it ended up being the same amount both days. Okay, good. Now, I don't really like question number five. I think we've talked a lot about all of this, so you have my permission. Would you go ahead and put a small x through number five, and we can skip right to that second page. So let's flip to 52. All right, at the top of 52, it says write a problem situation, and a problem situation is really just a story problem. And this is exactly like what we've been doing in class. When doing a division problem and there's a remainder, figuring out what would you do with the remainder. So the question is 13 divided by four. So in my head, I'm thinking what times four gets us close to 13? And the answer is three. Three times four gets us 12. Wait a minute, though. It's not 12. It's 13. There's our remainder 1. So one more time. If you think 3 times 4 is 12, 
plus our remainder. There's that 13 that we started with. So the mathematical answer is 3 remainder 1. Now they gave us one problem, but let's go ahead and do A, B, and C on our own. And we need to come up with a problem that sort of matches what they did with the remainder. So look at letter A. Instead of writing 3 remainder 1, they wrote 3 and 1 fourth. So they changed the remainder to a fraction. And problems that are good, changing the remainder to a fraction, would be like cookies or pizzas or brownies, right? Things that you can split into a fraction if you have some leftovers. All right, so you can write a story problem that's very similar to mine, but you also could write a story problem that's different, as long as it's a story problem that you would change the remainder to a fraction. So here would be my example. I'm going to say, I think I'm going to use pizzas. There are 13 pizzas. Okay, so there's the 13 part. And I'm going to talk about maybe four different teachers. If four teachers split them evenly, and again, your story doesn't have to be just like mine, but using like something like pizzas is a great one to change it to a fraction. If four teachers split them evenly, how many pizzas did each teacher get? And again, the answer is three remainder one, but we're going to change it to a fraction. So imagine every teacher gets three pizzas, yay! But there's one pizza left over. Are you gonna throw away a pizza? No, no you're not. You're definitely gonna split that pizza into pieces. So I want you to imagine that one pizza left over, and you really could split it like this, so each classroom, each teacher will get another fourth of a pizza, okay? All right, the next one is showing the remainder as a decimal, and that's really good for money problems. So now I'm going to write a story that has money involved, and you would write that remainder one as a decimal. Because remember, guys, the mathematical answer is three remainder one. But depending on the story, you might do something different with those remainders. Okay, so let's take a look at the decimal. And let's say um, four kids did some chores. So I'm making it into a money problem. They got $13.00. To split evenly. How much money did each kid get? Now we already know that the answer is three remainder one, but you would never say we each get three remainder one dollars. Like that sounds so weird. You would take that extra dollar, and isn't a dollar the same thing as, whoops, isn't a dollar the same thing as four quarters? So imagine splitting that dollar and saying a dollar is the same as four quarters. So if there was a dollar left and you were splitting it between four kids, each kid would get like, a bonus quarter, right? So instead of three remainder one, you could say $3.25. All right, 13 divided by four. Now it says for this situation, wait a minute, they want the answer to be four? That means they're rounding the answer <coughs> up. And I can think of an answer or a type of problem where you round the answer up. Okay, here we go. We're going to write 13 kids need to get 
to the big game. And again, your story can be similar to mine or a little bit different. You can make yours silly. It's just got to be a problem where you round the answer up. 13 kids need to get to the big game. If four kids fit in each car, how many cars do you need? for all the kids. And again, the answer is three remainder one. We know that from up above. We already know the answer is three remainder one. Three cars is not enough because there'd be a kid left over, right? And you can't leave a kid behind. So three cars is not enough. If three cars is not enough, better round up to four cars. So this would be an example where three cars is not enough. There's a remainder. There's a kid left over. So you would need to round up to four. So a problem like this where you have to round up, you need an extra car, is a great problem to sort of match what they wanted it to be. All right, number seven, challenge problem. Latoya made a set of cards with her favorite basketball players. She decided to give half of them to her friend Aaron and a fourth of them to her brother, and she still has seven cards left. All right, let's draw a picture. I want you to imagine this is like a basket, okay, and she's got all of her cards in it, and she's going to give half to Aaron. And then she's going to give a fourth to her brother. And the rest is going to be for her. Okay. All right. So Aaron gets half, her brother gets a fourth, and Latoya gets the rest. So Aaron gets, let's see, if Latoya has seven left for her section, then doesn't that mean her brother also has seven? And Aaron would be like both of that together. Aaron would be 14. So I'm using my picture. Half of it um, goes to Aaron, which would be 14. Her brother gets a fourth. And what that leaves left is a fourth for Latoya. So we knew that that was seven. And from that box, I was able to figure out the number for everybody else. Okay, so how many cards did she start with? That would just be adding all of those numbers together. 14 plus 7 plus 7 is 28 cards. Okay, so let me scroll up and show you the answers to page 51. And the answers to page 52. All right, kids, I will see you in class.